When you want to hear about games and only games, look no further. This is the Games Only Podcast, your number one source for video game news, reviews, and opinions. With HP 1703, Dr. Gumar, the boss is here at last, boys, and myself, Fresh Victor. Games Only Podcast on iTunes and YouTube. Hello and welcome. Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! And welcome to episode 26 of the Games Only Podcast. I'm your host, HP1703. Surprise! Didn't think we were going to show up, did you? Are they surprised to hear us? Yep. You they, they think on the podcast, they play, you and know. what is this? I brought the champagne as part of our surprise party to my east and kind of north, I think. Uh, the man who brought the streamers and the party favors. It's Dr. Gumar. I brought the horse derves. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> and to my south and west, the man who didn't know that there was going to be a party, so he grabbed whatever he could and wrapped it in newspaper. It's Sunflower 4000. Hello! Uh, oh, oh, I see... <laughs> You got us a roll of toilet paper. And, some, and a bag of chuckles. <laughs> and, and a stapler. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, so this is episode 26 of the Games Only Podcast. Let us talk about some games, shall we? Uh, yeah. There's been some stuff. Do we want to go into demos first? Or do we Do we want to talk about downloadable content? we got you're, some you're, new stuff this week. You're driving this boat. Okay. Are, we, are we on a boat? You're driving this train that's on the tracks that lead to the end of the show? Fantastic. <laughs> so you're pretty much slowing us up or speeding I, us uh, Right now I'm down. slowing us up. Slowing us up and speeding us down. No, right now I'm slowing right now us up. Us um, Let's get into the games. Let us talk uh, about uh, the game that I am most interested in, which is Alan Wake's American Nightmare Patent Pending. Uh, um, okay. Nope. Okay, we're not going to talk about that. No, it's all right. Nope. <laughs> Apparently, we're not going to talk about that. Sonny doesn't want to talk about it, guys. Okay, oh, let's talk I, about I, the I game do. I'm most interested in talking about. Saints Row the Third Gangsters in Space DLC. Gangsters in Space. Gangsters in Space. So, space. what are you doing? Are you navigating a map and going to planets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mining for minerals. <laughs> It's really, it's like the mini game from Mass Effect 2, where you mine planets. No, uh, Saints, the Gangsters in Space DLC is kind of the first mission-based DLC for Saints Row the Third. I think I've, I'm pretty safe oh, in like saying that. Like the real DLC? Yeah, um, if you'll recall on our podcast a few episodes ago, I played the, uh, the Ganky Bowl DLC and was none too pleased with my purchase, um... But gangs based on the strength of that, you went and bought this as soon as it came out. I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, but uh, Gangsters in Space is a uh, it's it's mission centric. So so basically, what you're doing as the um, leader of the Saints is you are starring in a movie. Um, so all the missions are kind of essentially just um, movie action scenes. Um, which in a really weird way is the only way that Saints Row the Third kind of works anymore because my, my character is, is level 50 and I have all the upgrades so uh, he doesn't, there's no bullet damage, there's no fire damage. He's basically invincible. Um, so the fact that they're doing something, it, you know, it's essentially like a kind of a medium-sized budget uh, action space movie that they're filming. Um, so you run around and shoot things, and there are new art assets, and it's it's actually really cool. It's it's kind of satisfying um, to run around in these these new areas, and some of the stuff you'll do in the the normal city, but there are interiors like um, you know you're on the set of this movie, and you're actually in um, 
kind of a, a lot where other stuff is being filmed. So there's there's not much much action, but there's a lot of uh, environmental stuff and all new voiceover dialogue stuff and uh, a new character uh, that you can that can be your quote homie unquote. Um, so yeah, in terms of DLC for Saints Row the Third, this one's head and shoulders above the Genki Bowl. Like, um, if, if you want, if you want more missions in Saints Row the Third, this is definitely the way to go. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It, it's maybe shorter than it should be for, I think it's like seven dollars. Um, but I really, really wanted a reason to go back to Saints Row the Third because I enjoy that game a lot and, um, yeah, I'm not at all upset with the purchase. Cool, that sounds great. Um, about how much content is there? Would you say in a time investment? I guess. Uh, time. I think I think I beat the whole thing in less than two hours. Um, but again, I can't I can't speak to difficulty because basically my dude's invincible. So I don't know if um, uh, like so so the the very first kind of mission you do um, is kind of the first scene of the movie where you fight through all these guards and um, rescue your co-star. Um, and as soon as you do that, the director yells cut and uh, basically says that there needs to be more explosions and more dudes. So you you basically do kind of the same thing again, but there are so many more guys in your way. Um, and yeah, again, I don't know if it would be something that would add length to the playthrough if if you could i mean get injured and and die potentially um but that's i don't know it's a couple hours i guess and um one of the things they do during the actual missions when you're when you're quote filming is they have this kind of overlay um that makes it look kind of like a granulated film reel um so you know, you distinctly know which parts are being filmed in the DLC, quote, filmed in the DLC and which parts aren't. Um, yeah, and that, that kind of filter is also kind of cool. Uh, something that they haven't done in the game at all is, is kind of add filters to what you're doing. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, that's all right, man. Sounds, sounds reasonable. And uh, Is there any kind of schedule on when the next stuff's out because I don't think there is really nothing yeah I have no idea I, again uh, I know they have some kind of season pass um, and if you if you bought the season pass this is free for you um, so go play it um, but I know they're still they're still releasing little packs of weapons and vehicles and maybe some more outfits or you know stuff that isn't really interesting. This is this DLC is actual mission content. There's maybe four or five missions. Um, there's a new uh, f- vehicle. You're you're basically in a UFO for a while, and um, some new environments. And in that respect, I think it's it's worth it if if that's what you want out of Saints Row right now. And I did. I wanted a reason to go back to it and experience some new things. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. Um, when are you ever going? Well, you're not one of those people that trades in your games, is it? Correct. Yeah. So I was about to say, how much longer till you give up on it and send it away? Never, because I own it. You go. Uh, I may even play through. I'm, um, I'm a couple hours into a different character. I may even just go through the entire game again with with another character. Um, Again, I really enjoy Saints Row the Third. I, I find it a lot of kind of mindless fun. Uh, so the fact that you're level fifty and you can't die doesn't bother you? Nope. It it it's all part of the ridiculousness that is this game. I cool. think. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. And it was uh, seven dollars again. Is that I, it? Th- I think it was five hundred sixty Microsoft points. So whatever that is in real I think person that's seven money. Seven ducats. It All right, like seven ducats. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. 
Uh, but don't, <laughs> don't, 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 buy the, don't buy the other one, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Ginky Bull is not worth your time. It's just, it's basically side missions, and it's not really enough of them to justify the cost. Cool, man. Cool. Hey, look. I mean, look at this paper. It says uh-huh. play Dead Island. You had some fangs that go bump in the night. Now, we talked about that last week, about these fangs that go bump uh-huh. in the night. Mm-hmm. I wanted to let you know. Did you have friends that were bumping in the daytime? We we <laughs> did. You played co op finally. You were also this lonely tonight. experience. Yes. Uh, so, a uh, friend of the show, co optimist guru, Locke Vincent, uh, and I went through a few missions. We, we were, uh, oddly enough, right about the same spot in the game. Um, so, we went through a few missions together last night. Um, and that game. Cooperatively is a blast. That so is, it's a lot better with a friend. Uh, I I had I had fun with it. Don't get me wrong. I had fun with it by myself, but we had a lot of fun together. Because um, there are sometimes in Dead Island when you can be overwhelmed by the enemies. Yeah, you've only got one hammer, and there's six. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And um, my my character, uh, I chose the throwing. Weapons specialist guy. Yeah, uh, so those ninja stars. Right, ninja stars. So sometimes to to use my better abilities, I'm like throwing my weapons away, which is not necessarily the best thing if you're playing by yourself. Um, so the fact that I had Locke there to kind of you know chip away at him with blunt weapons, and they I could need to give you like a yo-yo so you can beat people by throwing something that comes right on back. Well, the <laughs> That character has a uh, an ability called Boomerang, which gives him a, a a chance to just retrieve the weapon automatically. Um, Does it actually show like the screwdriver bouncing off the zombie head and landing right back in your hand? <laughs> no, but this this weird red uh, word Boomerang pops up like over the zombie. It's like Boomerang. I'm like, cool. I got my knife back. <laughs> I really? like how they don't give a shit about really explaining it. Like, whatever. <laughs> it's now back in my hand. I'm going to throw it again. Um, All right, so you played co-op and you had fun. How much did you play? Uh, we probably only got about two or three hours in. Uh, only? Shoot, I'm lucky to get that in night. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully we'll get some more in tomorrow and then over the weekend because uh, I don't know how many acts this game is. This game is broken into chapters and acts. Well, I gotta ask you a question about that. Uh, okay. Not really. Oh, great! Uh, what, a, boom, a, what a hilarious joke! <laughs> Use that in your comedy routine. You, I should. I will. Um, I need so, to ask you something about that X. So we're we're in Act Two right now, um, and I'm assuming there are probably five I or more acts. So maybe a little more. I know oh. that at Act Two, I was getting burned out. I, I didn't like the setting anymore. Mm. Yeah, for some reason, it's a lot more fun to be on the beach. Um, and, and in Act 2 and on, you're in, like, poor people town. So it's like, right. Well, all right, but, poor people. But they did, th- it does add, um, which is very interesting. I, I don't know that I've ever seen a game like this. Uh, in Act 2, it adds a day-night cycle and weather effects. So in Act 1, it's always the daytime and it's always sunny. And then in Act 2... You get this day night cycle, and sometimes it'll rain. And I don't, honestly, I can't think of a game that does that where it doesn't at least hint that there's some kind of day night and weather cycle in the game through the first, you know, five or six hours. All right, man. Anyone? Well, that's, Nothing? That's, that's okay, okay yeah. Are you feeling that maybe it's, it's going to be kind of an uphill battle from here on out as far as enjoyment goes? Uh, I don't think so. Not losing any of its luster with the change. Uh, no, because uh, when when the setting changed, I also added the co-op element, so I'm having a lot of fun. I think so long as I'm still playing it cooperatively, I think uh, I can run through this game pretty easily and still enjoy it. All right. Well, good luck with that. Uh, both of you guys also played uh, Binary Domain. What system did you guys play it on? PS3? Uh, 360. I also played it on the 360. Oh, so you only given the triple any love? <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know the PS3 has demos. 
Oh, they've got snap. demos. P- yeah, they've got demos. And PS3 is sleek. And black. So, so binary. So, so is my 360. It's black. <laughs> Great. 360. So binary domain. You mean the Xbox Circle? Okay. <laughs> So Binary Domain is a Sega a third-person shooter that... Uh, did you see it at PAX, Doc? I did not see it at PAX, okay. actually, no. Um, so I spent some time uh, at PAX, I think, watching Gravehound play it while I was talking to the developer. Um, so it, it looked terrible. Uh, because Gravehound was playing it, or because I was talking to a developer? The former. <laughs> it looked terrible. Oh, Sonny. <laughs> That's not how I sound. Um, the Gravehound blending into smoke is how I do it now. Um, so, right. So Binary Domain is a, a third-person shooter that has some kind of interesting gameplay mechanics to it. There's um, You pick a three-person squad. Um, yeah, who'd you pick? I picked the, the sniper chick. And then uh, some dude with SMGs. Oh, man, I picked the exact opposite team. I had the big yeah. guy with the machine gun and then the, the chick with the shotgun. And nice. I, I don't think it would be any different if I picked the other team. So s- this game kind of has an interesting um, mechanic in that you offer uh, voice commands to your team and the more they trust you, the more likely they are to do it. And the less they trust you, the less likely they are to do it. Yeah, it sounds it's like kinda, that might get frustrating. It's, it's kind of like the thing for the PS2 that was based off of the Stephen King movie. They had the same type of setup where they trust you more and they'll help out. But what, uh, did you did you really get into it at all with the demo? I, doc? I don't think the demo was long enough to get into it. Yeah, I mean, pretty much everything I did, they boosted up and they supported me, the only thing that you could really do wrong would be if you shot them, their morale would go down. Which makes sense. If I shot my friend in the back, I would hope he'd get pissed <laughs> off at me. Right? Um, so, so I didn't realize that the microphone had to be plugged in. Oh, I didn't so, even uh, use the microphone. I just used the uh, the hotkeys. You can hold oh. LB and it has the options. Mm-hmm. So I was doing it that way. Okay. I thought maybe so, it had to be like a connect enable for the voice command, so I didn't bother plugging in my mic. No, so uh, so I plugged my mic in, and you can actually there's a there's a voice recognition thing in the options, so you go through that, and and it kind of syncs with how you say certain words, and then you just verbally give the commands. I thought that was awesome. Um, and now again, what happens when you go like oh shit oh shit oh shit? Uh, I. <laughs> Actually, I said, oh, shit, and they thought I said stop, so they stopped running forward. Um, I so can see a flaw in this voice command it, system already. As as cool as the system might be, uh, there there are some, some bugs still in it. Um, but, yeah, I, I think in general that's, that's a gameplay mechanic I'm, I'm happy to see at least tried, um, and maybe... Maybe they'll make it work. I don't know. Um, Isn't Mass Effect 3 going to have something similar to that? Uh, yeah, and I think that's Connect enabled. Okay. I don't, um, but, w- right, we'll see. So so the fact that this kind of works makes me even more excited for Mass Effect 3, because I think, I think it'll be able to work. Because um, I think you have to actually verbally give the, the character name before you give a command. Anyway. Yeah, it's sex. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so binary dom- domain has this kind of uh, tactical dismemberment thing, kind of like like Dead Space has, where you can. Uh, so all the enemies are robots, and you can like shoot the legs of the robots, and they will Terminator style like crawl at you on the ground. Yeah, you can and, shoot the uh, the arm off that's holding the gun, and they'll have to pick up the gun with the other. Yeah, hand it's kind of cool because. Because you'll shoot the the arm off with the gun, and the gun will drop, and they will bend over with the other, and grab it with the other arm and if shoot you. You, uh, you shoot the head off. Sometimes they don't die, and they'll just start shooting around. And I saw that the other robots had to kill their friend without a head on because they oh, were that's shooting awesome. at them. Yeah, so uh, there are there are a lot of little elements in this in this game that might make it okay. What did you think overall, Doc? I I like the 
the RPG esque elements, the upgrades and stuff like that. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't even talk talk about the upgrades. Uh, yeah, the, so it seems like every character has like this blank slate in which you can. Uh, what the hell were they called? Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. They're like chips. D- DNAs. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> yeah, but, like these DNA little chip. these these little sure. Lego pieces that go on the board and they give you boosts, like vitality boost and uh, accuracy boost and stuff like that, as well as you can upgrade each and every single one of your guns. Uh, for money, so that that looked pretty interesting, but uh, the, I I didn't really like the shooting that much. Mm. It just it just didn't feel right. Um, even for like a shooter like uh, Gears of War three, in which it does take a lot of rounds to put down an enemy, mm-hmm. that still felt pretty good. Pretty um, here comes Sonny. He's gonna yell. Pretty visceral, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it felt it felt pretty pretty right. This it just I don't know. I didn't get that. That hmm. tang, that that feeling that I'm actually shooting the guy, even hmm. though I see like you know chips falling off and arms and whatnot, it just didn't feel right. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't I didn't necessarily get that at all, but um, you're right that basically the enemies are bullet sponges and and that can um, that can sometimes dampen your enjoyment of a shooter if you have to dump rounds into enemies. Um, did you play both? Of the scenarios, I did the uh, the second scenario was was pretty bad simply because there's no real map to show you where to go next. Yeah, so I had I, a bit of a problem in which I was just kind of trying to follow my teammates, but it's not like gears in which I could put up a hotkey and see where those guys are. Mm-hmm. I kind of had to look to see well where are the bullets coming from. Okay, now who's shooting who? Okay, I'm gonna go this way next to my <laughs> robotic Frenchman. And hang out with him for a bit. <laughs> yeah, I did not like that they gave me this robot Frenchie that I I couldn't kick out of my party. Um, yeah. Hey. Oh, what was his name? I don't even care what the, their names are. Really. Robo Le Frog. Frog. Yeah. Le Robo. Le uh, Frog. Um. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So, in general, are you? Ex- it doesn't sound like you're excited. I'm not, well, I'm not going to pick it up at launch, but I'd be interested in it after a price drop somewhere under forty dollars. I would be interested in it. Uh, they had some cool mechanics with uh, like two of my teammates started having a conversation, and then they went to me, "What do you think?" And I actually had the option to say something, and depending on what I said, it would boost one person's morale, the other person's morale, or both of their morales, or neither. Uh, like one girl asked me, "What should we do next?" And one of the options was "fuck." As in, like, you know, fuck this shit, I'm angry, fuck. <laughs> Not like, yo, baby, let's fuck. And she just got kind of upset when I said that, so. Huh. Interesting. I wonder if those uh, conversations are character-specific, because I, I never got that conversation. Well, you should have picked the big black guy with yeah. the, the machine gun and the, the little yeah. chick with the shotgun. Um, cool. Right. So, depending so you on... you buying it? I just said no, I'll wait for a price drop. No chance, but which price? I already said that. I said under forty. <laughs> so you're saying, hey, you guys, very, very interesting conversation. Oh wow! I think you fell asleep. No, um, I didn't fall asleep. Uh, yeah, I, I, th- I normally ask uh-huh. near the end, but if you guys went ahead and answered it, I'm sorry. I was uh, looking at a pretzel. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Yeah, uh, looking at pretzel really distracts me too. Not the first time someone has uh, looked at a pretzel rather than listening to me talk today. Um, Today, today, I think um, I'm I'm curious about this game. I I really want. I really am too. That the mechanics they have, the the leveling system, the just the conversations, the interactions for third person shooters looks like it's really well done. Um, the story looks kind of boring, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's robot humans, humans disguised, robots disguised as humans taking over the world. Body snatchers. Yeah, the Terminator. The aliens. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm curious how the, the, uh, kind of trust system will work over the course of the entire game. I'm also curious how that will work when you've... I, I am assuming there's co-op in this game, 
but I don't know that for sure. Yeah, well, it did say there's a multiplayer option, and I didn't pick it. I don't know if it was in the demo or not, but I, I don't okay. know if it's co- yeah competitive or cooperative. I would hope it's cooperative, simply because there are you have a three person team. Yeah, that would be that would potentially be a lot of fun. Yeah, um, although you would lose that entire kind of trust mechanic. Um, well, so, you know, uh, if you shoot me in the back, regardless of <laughs> me being the AI no, or not, I'm still not going to trust your ass. No, trust me. I, I, uh, Listen, yeah, a grenade might end up on your feet accidentally. On my feet? I'll yeah. just kick it. That's soccer, Holmes. Um, yeah, so Binary Domain, uh, give the demo a try, but I may try to rent this pretty soon after it comes out. Um Although it comes out next week, and then the week after is Mass Effect, so I don't know if I'm going to have time to play Binary Domain. Um, speaking of games that we don't have time to play, tell me a little bit about the SSX uh, demo. Yeah, that's that's something I heard came out, and since um, I've never been a fan, I didn't care. And should I have cared? Um, well, I played this at PAX originally, and... SSX always was a really over the top uh, sm- snowboarding game. It wasn't like a I don't Ricky know Winterborn. Any, yeah, it wasn't like uh, the Olymp- the Winter Olympics 2012 or anything like that. It was a <laughs> it was a very over the top, very cartoony. When I played this out PAX, it seemed very uh, like realistic. I want to say, even mm-hmm. though they were you. Know, going down a mountain, like dropping off a helicopter and going down Everest or some shit like that. It still seemed very realistic. Everest? Uh, yeah, Everest. Everest. How you said it. Ever, ever. Everest. Ever, ever, Everest. Everest. Cool. Everest. Uh, Mount Everest, is that better? Um, no. Uh, so the, <laughs> so the, uh, the demo, it, they, they definitely made it a bit, uh, a bit more wild, uh, more in tune with the actual SSX franchise. Uh, the demo starts off with them dropping you out of a helicopter, and you're just free-falling, and it, it's giving you um, the tutorial for how to control uh, your character, the different, type of, t- uh, different types of grabs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and um, the, after that, it seemed pretty well done, because right away I was stuck on a world map, in which I can go to a bunch of different mountains. Uh, only two were open. Only two trails were open. But uh, it gave all my friends like a list on the side that were playing it. So the, peop- the people on my friends list that played the demo uh, were on there, and they said, you know, high score on this run. This person got a medal on this run. So it seems to be it's going to be very uh, score-based, very time-based with uh, an entirely large community. It's an EA game, so I signed into the EA servers. Uh, through the normal means, so it seems like it's going to be very well connected. Uh, the two types of races there were, one was uh, tricks, so trying to get as many points as possible, you know, chaining tricks together going down the mountain, and the other mm-hmm. one was uh, a race, just a straight-up uh, time trial. But the more tricks you do, the more boost you get, and you can, so you're supposed to be doing tricks the whole time. But it felt fairly well done. Uh, I was actually impressed by it. I don't think it's really my style of game, at least to buy at launch and, you know, um, drool over it, but just the uh, the fact that it has that interactive scoring, um, there's always you know, uh, always somebody's score out there. You can see all your friends instantly if we're on this track, on this mountain, instead of me racing the, you know, the four uh, AI control of people or whatever. It, I think it, it might even have I, don't, I can't remember. I think it might have even had a, a ghost of, like, cast riding down the mountain. Oh, wow, uh, with cool. Me. So I, I would have an idea of what his time was. I'm not sh- so sure about that. Don't quote me on that. But I thought I saw his name over one of the uh, the characters. So basically, well, so I've heard a lot about this game. And I, uh, again, one of the, the developers I got to talk to at, at PAX kind of walked me through a lot of it. Um, this game has a lot... Like, uh, formulate a sentence, John. Okay, great. So, <laughs> this this game has a lot in it that probably the demo can't even show. Like, the um, the fact that there will be event, real-time events um, and uh, I, I all the... I think it kind of mentions something like that, but okay. it's, it's the demo, so it can't really show me anything. Yeah, like that. Yeah, and, and it'll have that kind of auto-log type... Um, where you have, 
you, you, your friends' scores and your scores, and there's always something to aim for if you're if you're into uh, kind of time trial, time attack kind of things or or high score challenges. There's always somebody ahead of you that you can challenge, um, and I believe you can filter out if if somebody's so much better than you that you'll ever you'll never get to their scores. I think you can filter out some of your friends. So they won't even show. So you can be like the best on your friends list who isn't the guy except, who's really yeah, good. Except for that asshole. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm super curious about, and I'm really upset that the demo doesn't show, the kind of survival mode. Um, have yeah, you heard there's, anything there's, about There's supposed to be like an avalanche tra- chasing you? Yeah, so, so an avalanche is chasing you, and sometimes it's at night, so you have to have... They're like headlight headlamps for and flashlights and yeah, stuff, and you have minor, to like minor helmets. Yeah. Yes, minor helmets. The things I take off of the miners, um, not those miners, baby. Oh, okay, uh, <laughs> right. So, so you uh, you're kind of always moving. For, it's kind of like the uh, just fucking run mode in Fear Three. Actually, because you're you're trying to progress forward with this wall of death behind you, um, I would have been really curious to get a chance to play that, but that is apparently not in the demo. Um, any kind of uh, character customization in the demo? Uh, no, it showed I think all of the available characters that are you know built in the game. I don't. Can you make your own character? I thought you could change their yeah, boards yeah, you, and you, their you, outfits. And yeah, everything's locked in the demo, but it does say, okay, it has like four different slots, board, outfit, and a few other things. And there's also an option to optimize it for the type of trail and the mountain you're ri- riding on. So I guess maybe certain boards and certain outfits are better for whatever you're doing. That seems, awesome. seems pretty interesting. Yeah, and uh, a lot of... I, I think they they started all these um, courses with real N- NASA mountain, you know, photographs uh, and, and yeah. I don't know how right? accurate that is since there's Antarctica on there, <laughs> and um, also there's New Zealand, which kind of looked like it was a volcano that was snowed on or something like that. Yeah. It was like really black crags and whatnot and just snow. So that I don't know about right. how like complete accurate they are because I've never been to New Zealand nor did I know they had much snowboarding. Uh, if any New Zealand listeners can correct me on that, that'd be nice. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Always but yeah, pandering like, to the New Zealand audience, yeah, Doc. Yeah, you know, but I was in the Rockies and that seemed pretty straightforward. So yeah, I can see them Going, like they're going with a lot more realism than they did the last few games. Actually, the entire series. They rebooted the whole series, and they're going much more realistic. Yeah, so like you were saying, this this game isn't really my bag, but I think in a lot of ways this is, this is the SSX game that would get me playing SSX games. I think there's a I lot of really too. cool things. Yeah, a lot of really cool things in this game, and... Um, it seems to be implemented well. How was the gameplay itself? Did, did um, I was, enjoy it? It was, was a- using um, so to make grabs. You can do either the face buttons or you can use the uh, right analog stick. And I was doing the right analog stick, but um, for some reason I had this problem, which every time I wanted to go forward, like I'm holding forward on the on the left stick, so that would cause me to always do front flips, um, hmm. just out of sheer hindrance for me and how my brain works. Because you know, if I'm going forward. I'm usually holding forward on that stick, regardless if I'm turning or not. Mm. Uh, but it, it felt pretty well done. I mean, I depending on how you use the stick. Like if I hit left first and then hold the direction of where I want to grab, I'll use my left hand to grab that as opposed to my right hand. And there's different huh. inputs to have like two hands grab one side of the board. It's it's really well done. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I guess if. If this style of game is your style of game, this is probably a very good one of those. Can I say that? Actively? Yeah, it, this would be a snowboarding game I'd be happy to play. And the last snowboarding game I really enjoyed playing was Cool Borders 2. So. <laughs> cool Borders 2. <laughs> I, don't, I have no like, idea what that is. An, he plays an alien on a little flying saucer. Like, that sounds game. awesome. Oh, he was sweet. He could spin really, really fast. That's super important. Yes. 
snowboarding. That's, a, that's all that mattered. Um, all right. So uh, looks like you want to talk a little bit more about Amalur. Um, I, it's, I'm still playing. The story's getting a bit better, and I think this game actually might be right up your alley HP because what? I learned that they're the collectibles in the game, they're called lore stones, and they tell a little bit about the story and background. Mm-hmm. They actually give you permanent boosts to your character. Oh, shit. So if I find all of the lore stones in one area, it would be like plus 4% health permanently. Oh, wow. So it's it's actually it's really my type of collecting, which it actually means something, as opposed to actually just collecting things like you do. <laughs> <laughs> because you're obsessive and you must own it all. Yeah. Um, if, interesting. Okay, so uh, is, there, is there a lot of... Okay, here's a better question. Would you say that the collecting um, rewards you in some kind of real way? Like, or are you just searching in stupid areas and, um, and all you find is a stone? Some are a bit out of the way. Some are, you know, right on the path right next to you. Uh, so I, I think maybe like maybe one out of five are kind of tucked away in a corner. Um, but even if you just find like four out of the five, you don't get that permanent boost. But they do give you experience points mm. for finding them. Uh, and right now I'm putting skills into a trait that uh, lets me find all those automatically on my mini-map. Oh, so okay. So I don't even have to search for them. That way I can not have to search for them. That's very yeah. cool. That that uh, that gives people who don't like to just roam around a way to still collect things if they want. the. Yeah. That's very cool. But yeah, I spent like a couple hours. The second I realized they're worth points, I looked at some places. I'm like, well, this area I have four out of five. Let's see if I can't find the other one. Um, and then some are behind like hidden doors, so you really need to put that put points into that trait that uh, it's called detect hidden, so you can find hidden doors and all the lore stones mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Hmm. But yeah, I'm, you, I'm 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 enjoying it. Uh, the creation system is really well done because it's not you're just putting a bunch of random things together and you get an item back. Each item you add into your created like weapon, it'll say like this will add plus 45 health or something like that. So it's it's very intuitive. Um well done. Fighting's always good. The story's getting slightly better, so I'm going to keep playing it. Oh, very cool. And I suggest price drop you pick it up too, man. Uh I think I will. I think I will. There there are enough people who have sung enough praises that uh the only thing stopping me now is price and time. And Sonny should play because it's not boring Snow World like Skyrim. <laughs> I'm interested in it though. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Did you play the demo, Sonny? Uh, briefly. Okay, just enough to know you weren't interested. Uh, I mean, it seems okay, but it just seems like it's too little, too late, and bigger things are on the horizon. Yeah, just the the few innovations they added in there should be. You know, applied to every single RPG. So, hopefully, a lot of people take notes at least on it if they don't play it. Yeah. 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 What have you been playing, tough guy? Uh, yeah. uh, went back to Dawn of War two. Okay. Of course, um, that is still one of my favorite games. In fact, that was on a whole War Warhammer forty thousand kick, and um, I went back and I figured it's time to play through Space Marine again. Why not? Let's play it mm-hmm. on the hardest difficulty level and have some fun. Still fun, still great. Um, you never played Space Marine HP? No, and it was it's it probably still is on sale at GameFly for yeah, I like think thirteen. 13. I, I almost picked it up. It up. Yeah, there's, there's a good sale this week, so I'm going to drop it's a lot. Very worth playing through the story at the very least. There's also some co-op modes as well. Is, is the story worth it, even if you are not someone who's familiar with? the Warhammer lore? I say yes, because what it will do is it will give you enough of the lore that you'll be like, wow, I really want to know more about this. And okay. It doesn't necessarily explain a few things that I thought would be pretty important for people to know, because they're like, yeah, you're a badass space marine. You're like, okay, I'm a space marine. That's cool. And the only time you ever really <laughs> notice these things is when you're standing next to a human and you're like, oh god, they're little. I'm a giant. Right, you're like nine feet tall, badass. right? Uh, I believe most Space Marines top out at around 7 foot 1. Oh, okay. Outside of their armor. Um, they also have extra organs that have been implanted into their body. Um, some particular ones also have... Uh, Two weenies? No. I, 
Maybe. Don't really I don't know. I haven't seen a dick, so... <laughs> they don't really use those, to my knowledge. Um, That's too bad. Of the way that they reproduce and all these other things. But anywho, that's all That's all lore stuff. But, uh, you know, some of them can spit acid because... What? Uh, some of them have a venom sack. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, they, they get that implanted. And you have no idea where they spit acid from. <laughs> These guys are seriously supposed to be incredible badasses. So when you get into it and you read a bit about it, and this isn't stuff that you see in the game, really. Okay. Like, oh, wow, they really are badasses. Holy cow. No wonder they can, you know, get shot in the face and live. Things like that. With a <laughs> bullet the size of my arm. Well, <laughs> yeah. But anyway. So, uh... No frustration, even on the hardest difficulty level, or is Not it really? Just I know that I have to play smart on hard. And, okay. Um, the game itself, the combat's just—it's uh, it's delightful. It's not overly complicated. Um, it feels good, and it feels like you're a killer. It feels good. Worth playing through the whole game. I mean, it's not a terribly long game. I mean, you're looking at about six to eight hours, single player mode, and uh, it's good to play on a weekend. Beat it, have fun, enjoy it, and say that was cool. Uh, is, is there a co-op uh, element to it? Uh, for the story, but they have Exterminatus mode, which is Horde mode. Basically. Okay. And uh, it, it's cool. I mean, it's fun enough to play with your friends. And the Versus is okay, too. I, I don't mind that at all. It feels kind of loose, but it feels like one of those games where people aren't actively trying to be the greatest, which is nice, because you feel like you're playing with people around your same skill level. Mm-hmm. So hmm. it's it's not frustrating. It's just you know, I don't know. It's know, it's a pleasant game. It's worth playing, and especially for thirteen dollars, I cannot recommend it enough. I feel bad because I bought it on sale. They have um, foolishly released two DLC packs for the multiplayer, which offer new maps as well as new game modes, and mm. they're ten dollars a piece. And I feel like I should buy them because I really do want to support this game, even though I didn't buy it new. Um, but I would like to, you know, do my part, maybe try these other modes, but I don't know. I really like the game. I really, really do. I can't recommend it enough. Fantastic. And and you played some Dawn of War 2 as well? Yeah, and that's the strategy version. Right. <laughs> in, in other words, on my PC. And Boy, that game will get you to want to know more lore about them because of all the cool shit that you can do in that game. So it's fun. You know, harvesting souls by punishing one and things like that. Lots of fun. Uh, okay. Did you did you play uh, by yourself or cooperatively? Or? I played with some friends from our IRC channel. It's been good times. Um, very casual play. We're not trying to be the best. We're just having fun and soaking up the world and the atmosphere. The atmosphere is good in both games. Not just Dawn of War 2, but also in Space Marine. The atmosphere is very, very good. Uh, what you're looking at in space is you're on a what's known as a uh, a, a manu- or a uh, factory world. I think there's a better name for it, but it's basically the whole planet has been turned into a factory to make gigantic, enormous weapons of war, which is kind of neat in its own special way. So you're not <laughs> in sweet jungles. What's so funny? No, it's, yeah, that's that's neat. It's so funny. Sweet, yeah. sweet jungles on your sweet jeep. <laughs> I would I would describe a war factory planet as neat. It is neat. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's got gothic architecture because, and this is another part, um, it's more related to the lore, the look of these t- types of things. Very tall, lots of spires and arches and skulls everywhere. It's really grim, but it also looks pretty cool. So, I don't know. I like the look of it. I think that they nailed the sound and the look really well. Pretty fantastic. So, anyway, enough about that. <laughs> All right. What else you been playing this week? Uh, I got Blaze Blue Community. No. Continuum uh, Extended Striker. There. You know, this is worse than Street Fighter. Um, I I th- I thought you didn't like Blaze Blue. I don't. But you know what? I <laughs> oh, tried don't to don't even ask him why he picked it up. Because <laughs> keep my horizons broad. It's, it's so why it's, did you pick this? <laughs> Did, okay. did you did you beat it like you beat Skyrim? Like I beat what? Skyrim. Oh no. <laughs> to keep your to keep your horizons broad. I played it to keep my horizons broad. I said to myself, okay, it's been a while since I played Shit Blue. Let's try another Shit Blue game. 
And, uh, wow, I, if I didn't know any better, I'd think I put in the game from three years ago. Holy crap, it's the exact same game with a few extra characters and a few extra modes. Totally blue! Gave it 15 minutes. Totally blue! What a horrible game. Didn't do it for me. Uh, from what I hear, this really screwed over people because it had all the DLC characters that they sold from the second entry in the series. Mm. So people that bought those really got douched right in the butt. So well, it's pretty much just a patch, isn't it? It also has a balance patch, which you would think would come out for a regular game. It adds very little. Very little. It's a $40 price point. Lucky Ooh. for me. So fuck that. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, do you think this is the way fighting games are going now? That no, no, no. I think this is a just a little bit of exploitation for some anime weeaboo fans that just <laughs> can't resist its garbage. <laughs> okay, okay. I think it is. I mean, that's that's the way it is, and you know, a lot of us get exploited in different ways. Me, it's with Mass Effect Three DLC, no doubt. It's with double dipping. Double dipping might be a little exploitative. I don't. But, um, hey, hey, if I like a game, I'm going to buy it twice. If I hate it, I'm not. Everything I, I'm sure there's a few games you hate that you've bought twice. No, no, no. I'm I guarantee you on that list, there's some game like, why the fuck did I do that? <laughs> I am sure that is not the case. I did not buy L.A. Noir on PC. <laughs> so I have at least got that little shred of dick. Um, uh, remind me to buy and gift you Skyrim. On Steam. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to support that developer. Um, anywho, um, anywho, so I played that. I played a little bit of uh, WWE 12, but nobody really cares about that. Uh, I played. Do I, do I not care about that? I don't know that you've ever talked about the game. You just say, hey, I played this game, and that's. But, it's the but game. nobody gives a shit and move they, on. Nobody cares. It's, it's cool. It's, <laughs> I'm not going to bore people to tears. I'm like, well, you know, they've got your cage matches. Well, if you do it in the voice of cage. Randy Macho Man Savage, <laughs> I think it won't be that boring. Oh, but he can't speak anymore. He passed away. That's uh, why you have to use his voice to spread the live, word. It's got to live on. Um. I, I don't think I could do his voice without coughing. It's pretty... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a cage match for one player, or even two, if you can spoil Rumble, and everybody's happy. There's lots of entrances, and you can create your own dude. Uh, is this... Is I know there were some changes. There were big changes to the franchise in this iteration. Um, Not as big as I wanted. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's another one of those. Yep, everything. It feels totally different, and it does feel good in a positive way. It's okay, but it's uh, like I said, no one really cares. Everyone who would. I care. am lis- I am listening and caring right now. If you like to make your own dudes, this is yeah, a great you. Game. If you love making your own dudes, it's a great game. Like dressing up my dolls. If you like making the dolls from scratch and then putting a little clay added, in added the clay. So here's here's a thing. I like to I like to make uh my dude and give him an outfit and give him an entrance and stuff, but I don't like going through all the move sets. Yeah. And saying it, there's oh, a, there's I too many of them. Grapple know? from the front. I kind of want to Irish whip him here. Yeah, when like, I make dudes, I pretty much, like, I'm like, all right, I got the look down, now let me give them a cool finisher and just go with a basic set. So they do have standard move sets that you can Yeah, I mean, you can, you can copy over someone else's moves and then tweak a few okay. of them if you want to change them. So that way you don't have, like, oh, this is the same kicks from the same dude. You'd be like, no, I got somebody else's special types of kicks and the way that they move, stuff like that. You can just adjust their finishers or whatever you want. So they let you copy the data over for the move. Very cool. Uh, it's also been in there for many years, so it's not exactly new for them. Uh, I don't care. I'm glad that they kept it in. So another thing I did this week was uh, I gave up on Final Fantasy XIII too and sold it. Yay! Okay. You know I want to finish it. I forgot to mention. High on that game, huh? I forgot to mention last week though that you would have thrown it out anyway. Like not even sent it back. You would just thrown it straight out because I don't think it's a spoiler, but the last area. The reason why you have a jump button is because it's a platformer. Oh, well, that sucks. Yeah, it did suck. It sucked a lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, it got, it got kind of hairy balls. I, I was at, I was at an almost breaking point because to progress in the story, I believe you had to answer quizzes. Correct, ten answers in a row. Riddles no. three. No, you and, didn't. All right, whatever. And sometimes their question would be a random one: heads or tails, and you just had to be lucky. Tails never fails. Heads till I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we figured so maybe that they one weren't out. necessary, but you know what? That's the game's fault for not explaining that it wasn't necessary. I was like, "Oh, fragments here! I need to get them." Yeah, I talked about that whole puzzle thing too. I I wanted to do the puzzles. I wanted to answer the questions because I like questions about the lore. But uh, the the fact that they threw in those random things, it was terrible. It's like, how can we smear poop on every idea in a certain spot? Like, everything is such a great idea in theory, and they've managed to screw up every single nuance of that game. It sucks. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're going to give you monster collection, but while we're at it, near the beginning of the game, we're going to give you the strongest monster <laughs> you can get, so you won't care anymore. I'm like, well, that stinks. Okay. Hey, here's this cool new level up system. By the way, if you don't go to the internet to find out how it works, you're probably going to screw up your dude. Cool. All right. <laughs> Quizzes? Let's just do a random 50-50 question. Guess what's behind my back, you know? <laughs> oh, hands. a peanut. Yeah, it's just a like... circus peanut. Incorrect. I have no hands. Ah. Yeah. It's this horrible mix of all these different gameplay elements that are fine on their own. But they've managed to stain each and every one of them to make it bad. Whereas if you run into a brick wall, it's a hard-ass brick wall. Yeah, um, you, you're really lost. You have no idea where to go. It's It plays very loosely with a sense of direction in the game, which is a shame, because in the beginning, everything is open to you, and you're continually discovering new things, and then all of a sudden, hey, nothing else is unlocking. It's time to backtrack a little bit, but I don't have any idea where to backtrack. Hmm. And it's just... It, it's open-endedness is the death of it. It sucks. It's a shame. I still enjoy a lot of the game, but... I knew at that moment uh, when they said, you got to go back through time and find the five different Graviton cores. I go, you know what? No, I don't. Yeah, I was Let's lucky because I already had five, so I didn't have to do it. See, I had three of them. Oh. And I was like, oh, good, maybe I've got them all. And they're like, you're missing two. And I was like, which ones? We ain't telling. I'm like, oh, really? They said the person at the front desk will tell you where it is. Well, I went to the front desk, and they showed me all five of them, like what worlds they'd be in. And I'm like, well, I don't know where I've been. Shit. That Got bitch. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm really sad because I wish it had kept up the same, you know, uh, momentum that it had in the first 10, 15 hours. But once Serendipity opened up, which is their bad casino, <laughs> that's when things started to go downhill. It's a shame. Have you ever experienced a game that you were that high on and then went that far down, like... Have you ever had a game that you enjoyed so much starting off and then ended up hating so much as as this game? Well, I'm sure there's been other games like that. Games that have dropped the ball. You're making me get out of bed and look at my... Uh, cool, cool spot for the SNES. Cool spot! I always wanted to be the 7-Up dude, and then that game blew chunks. <laughs> Alright, so along the same line, avoid the Noid for the NES... No, here we go. Man, no, I, I wanted to be the Noid. Uh, Little Caesar's Pizza Pizza. Uh-huh. <laughs> Straight yeah, out of D-Town, baby. <laughs> Detroit, represent. Represent. Oh, Little Caesar's um, Pizza so bad. The first Little Caesar's Pizza glitch. thinks you're bad. Sorry. Oh, oh, God, it's like Grease. Um, yeah, not the movie, it. the actual bucket of Grease. Running up the quarter mile. Grease, lightning, go. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, uh, like I was saying, uh, uh-huh. one of the other games like that would be the first Kane and Lynch where the game was really amazing in the first half, maybe a little bit more, and then they threw you in a scenario that was just so incredibly unappealing that I didn't want to keep playing anymore, which was a shame. Hmm. Uh, it went from the cool world of bank heists and breaking people out of prison to, there's a war with revolutionaries in Colombia, and you're on such and such a side and have to kill people in the army, and you're like, well... That's not really what I signed up for. I wanted to do some cool heists. Yeah, that I sounds know. familiar, because I watched Club Paradise this weekend, and that's exactly the storyline. Uh, I've never heard of it, but now I know what it is. You've never seen Club Paradise before? I've never even heard of it. My God. Yeah, it's a Robin Williams movie, dude. 
Come on, uh, funny man. Are you one of those people that Adam? likes Robin Williams? I, I do. It's like 80s Robin Williams. When he was good. Yeah. I like, I basically, like Robin Williams. Patch Adams. And just as Harry. It's a right. pile of shit that is Patch Adams. What about, what about <laughs> Good Will Hunting? You know, he's wicked smart. Welcome to the Games Only Podcast. Rob. Episode 26. Well, I think Sonny's oh. played one more game this week. Uh, I have. I'm still looking at my library to find out what other games I kind of got bummed out a decent amount of the way through. But uh, we can talk about uh, a game that right now I'm really high on, and hopefully it won't let me down. Alan Wake's American Nightmare. Oh, thank God. We only spent the last... Why wouldn't you talk about this at the beginning? I I, I just was taken aback at being first, that's all. I, I'm stuck. I will never was, do that it, to you he was again. Insulted that you wanted to speak to him first. Oh, no, you, I will you never can. make it you just, first again. Nope. It just he was like save the best for last, jackass. Never starting with you ever again. All right. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So tell me about Alan Wake's American Nightmare patent pending. Uh, we I'll are tell you about what's what's a little bit different. Uh, if mm-hmm. you tuned in last week, you heard about my Alan Wake one replay. Where a lot of it was in the Pacific Northwest, you're out in the the uh, woods, you know, yeah, and Oregon and running around, stumbling over streams, looking at wildlife, things like that. Uh, this one transplants you to the desert of Arizona, not the deserty desert, but the you know <laughs> the deserty desert, but the type where it's like, oh, there's a diner next to the road in the desert, and there's all these pretty plateaus and canyons, stuff like that. Mm. It puts you in that type of area and changes your clothes. If you're interested in that, you are now wearing flannel. What? No oh, longer no. the the hood and the blazer. No more hood. No more blazer. By yeah. the way, by so. the way, real quick, his outfit in the first game is one of the dumbest outfits in the history of gaming. Why? He's got like a he's got like a dress coat over a sweatshirt. That is Dude. the stupidest thing in the world. <laughs> Did you see bears? Hey, did you want to comment on Barry's hey, outfit? Hey, Barry is I like, awesome. I like the bubble jacket, all right? Barry yeah. is awesome, but you do not wear the bubble jacket with shorts. I do. You're ugly if you do that. <laughs> Don't look, well, look, look, then look, I'm look, ugly. There, there are a bunch of yuppies out in the woods. Okay, okay. so you've got a there's different environment, different outfit. Different um, story. Um, Alan Wake is there. It's... Shown as an episode of Night Springs, and if you're not familiar with that, mm-hmm. in the first Alan Wake game, you would see basically a ripoff of the Twilight Zone on television called Night Springs. And they mentioned that Alan had written an episode of Night Springs, and this is that episode that Ooh. you're kind of playing, which is neat. Yeah, that is, that is cool. cool. So, so what's going on is that there is somebody who looks just like Alan Wake named Mr. Scratch, who's killing people, and it's up to you to find out what the hell's going on. Uh, did you, do you have, need to have played the DLC for the other, for the first game? I wouldn't say that you need to, but I'd say that you should, because there's a lot of, uh, callbacks to that, and it'll enhance your overall experience. I'd recommend it. Okay. Um, the game itself plays, surprisingly, a lot better. I didn't realize that Alan Wake, um... the first one controlled so poorly because this one you seem a lot more light on your feet you're a lot easier to control um, they've made the game easier so it's not so much about trying to manage what you've got it has respawning ammunition and batteries that will eventually never run out which is neat hmm. um, they offset that by giving you new enemies and tougher enemies to fight so it's a little bit more combat focused and a little bit more uh, not so much survival horror as it is exploration, because they take you out of the l- pretty linear chapters that you had in the first game. Yeah. They give you a hub world, basically, which is this little town in the middle of the desert. So it's kind of neat to be able to explore and poke around and look around and look for manuscript pages. There are yeah. over 50 collectibles in this game. Out of oh. Whoa. Yeah, imagine my surprise. Uh, and so far, the story has been extremely interesting. The characters are very well written, as they should be, because after all, you're a writer. You wrote this. <laughs> uh, and I can't wait to play more. I'm about an hour and a half in. Um, and I'm in an observatory, which is kind of neat. I can't wait to observe some stuff. And they play with a mechanic called you have to rewrite reality, which means you have to find particular 
manuscript pages and then do what's in those pages. For instance, very early in the game, I got these manuscript pages that told me that there was a CD playing in the CD player, uh, the battery was flashing, and something else was going on, like someone had turned a valve. I had to find the valve, the CD, and the battery, plug them all in and get everything going so that the scene could play out in front of me, and then it did. And okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting compared to how they did the manuscript pages before, in which it was basically a spoiler. Now it's actually helping you go on with the story. Yeah, and I liked how they did that in the first game, too, because it kind of filled in some blanks that they didn't necessarily explain to you, but they wanted you to already know. Uh, this one does have those types of manuscript pages, but the ones that alter reality that are set more as a guideline are really cool, and they have actual licensed music as well, which lends a lot to the game, I I really enjoy licensed music when it's used well. Oh, fantastic. Uh, do you have do you have any indication of how long this is going to be? I hear it's around four to five hours, if you okay. take your time and don't rush through it. Uh, I would imagine it's probably three hours if you do rush through it and aren't interested in it. That doesn't sound like me. And how uh, much was it? Fifteen? It's fifteen dollars. Uh, and it also has an arcade mode, which is a score-based survival mode where you have to survive till morning. Now is, oh, um, very cool. Is the original disc necessary? No, it's not. This is very standalone. Okay. Uh, I will say that the survival mode is single-player only. Ooh. Mm. So keep that in mind, but so far it's been $15 well spent. Uh, all it's done so far is make me super hyped for Alan Wake 2 because the improvements they've done in this game... Looking pretty nice, so I very, very highly recommend it, and I'm really enjoying the time I've spent so far, and I can't wait to play some more. Have they have they announced an Alan Wake 2? Uh, not officially, but they've also said okay. that American Nightmare is a stopgap between Alan Wake 1 and 2. <laughs> so they uh, have said that they're working on it, but they haven't said, this is the game. They said, yeah, this is what we're doing in the meantime, and then we're going to transition over to that, so... I would expect the new one um, either is one of the final Xbox 360 games or something that would launch the new platform whenever that comes out. Mm. Yeah, they're they're probably still writing the game because you know this this expansion kind of shows they're working on new mechanics or improving their old mechanics, so they're probably still writing Alan Wake too. And let me tell you guys this: this is important to anybody who's ever listened to American Nightmare. The first Avatar award you get is a hoodie that says American Nightmare. <gasps> <laughs> I'm wearing it. Royalties. Yeah. Shit. We got. We got dap. Uh, what are the words for this? Swag. Funny. Like word. Oh. Swag. Rifle burst. Fucking mad ducats. Rifle burst. Swag. Swag just stands for stuff we all get. Well, stuff some of us get. So. Sw- so. So. Swag. Swag. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. It almost makes me want to drop the lawsuit. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you won't see me pursuing it, but yeah, fantastic. And, um, you know, it's a small experience. It's a short experience compared to a full-length $60 game, but uh, I believe that the price is right, and it's got enough longevity with the arcade mode to uh, have quite a bit of fun with it. I can encourage everyone to go ahead and give it a try, and it looks better than the first game, too. It has good looks, real good looks, and Arizona is really a fantastic setting. I like it a lot. Has good looks. Yeah, put that on the box. City, sweet yeah. deserts, sweet cliffs, pretty, pretty, handsome. It's essentially a, a pretty looking game. It's it's essential and emergent and visceral feel through these set pieces. This is just like the Segway argument. You guys will beat Yay! it. Yay! <laughs> um, is that it for you, Sonny? I would say. Mostly. I'm trying to play Mass Effect 2 again, but not being very successful. Um, I pre-ordered <laughs> Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which was stupid of me. I did too! We could play together! I'd rather not... I don't we can share did... everything now. <laughs> when Even worse, game? I pre-ordered the Collector's Edition. Oh no! What? Because what? I brought in I brought in a bunch of games to trade in, and I traded them into my roommate, because she works at GameStop. I was like, okay, I'll get it. She's like, you've got enough here for the collector's edition. I was like, nah, I'll be okay. She's like, are you sure? It's only $10, and you get a lot for $10. And I was like, maybe you do have a problem. 
<laughs> nah. Uh, what does what does the collector's edition have? I don't even know. Some gen <laughs> shit of little baby arcade cabinet. I don't even yeah, I didn't, I didn't even bother oh, looking at. It. Like, yeah, it's a fighting game. No collector's edition. You did the same thing for Marvel, didn't you? Yeah, I got to see that, but I knew what was in that, and I wanted it. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah, two extra characters. That's cool. This she she just suckered you in. Well, yeah, she's a GameStop. She's worker. the employee. <laughs> she suckered you in. She's a really fabulous employee. One way or another. But yeah, yeah, between that and Mass Effect 3, and I requested some days off for that week. Like a trip. Good for no, you. No, 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 you requested. I requested a few days off, so I'm going to fill my days with joy. The only joy I give a shit about. I'm, I'm, taking, I'm taking that entire Tuesday and just playing Mass Effect. I asked for Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you know, win. Two whole pizzas, not leave oh, the house. Shit. Yes. That's not a bad idea. I might order pizza on a Monday evening. Tuesday comes around, hey, it's morning, let's eat some pizza and then play some games. And then hopefully I eat enough in the morning to be sick of it all day. And there you go. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That sounds things. beautiful. Um, yeah, I think I think that's about it for me. Uh, um, I got nothing else to say except <laughs> Well, I did have a friend over, and we played through Heavy Rain. Um, I, I heavy Rain? Didn't, heavy. Did, did you or did you not hate that the first time? I liked it all the way up till the end when the okay. thing pooped on my eyes. Basically. Okay. Because I really enjoyed Heavy Rain. I, I think I'm in the minority as well. I still need well, to play it. I No drive to buy, because it's still rather expensive, isn't it? I don't know. Honestly, the only gripe I truly have with the game is the story. The gameplay, I knew what I was getting into, so I wasn't surprised or let down. Or I was like, it doesn't take any skill! I'm did you p- did you play it with the move this time? Hell no, I ain't buying no move. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't buying no move. We don't need no move. We ain't trying to talk about geometry. We're playing play some games. But, uh, yeah, I, I played... Uh, or I didn't play, but my friend played through it. And he's a very loud, animated guy who he's very intelligent. I I enjoy his company, and he played through it, and he actually didn't have any problems with the story. I was like, that didn't bug you. And he's like, no, didn't, no, no, didn't bug he me loved, either. He, he loved it. He did things like spare the drug dealer. He did some shit that I would have never done. Uh, he went in for the kiss and the love scene that I didn't. Oh, get. he's he's the compassionate counterpart to nice. you, your anger and your. So, death, death for drug dealers. How was it? How was it watching someone play that game? Did it feel like a movie experience, or it were was you surprisingly fun with the right person? If you've got the right kind of friend who will get really into something and talk about it with you while you play, uh, he was really funny to me though because he would do things like <laughs> find this particular uh, spot in one of the motions where it look, would look like your character's having a stroke. And he'd just keep it there and be like, ah! ah do things like that that would make me laugh. <laughs> get serious when it was time. But it really depends on your company. But um, I really, I much enjoyed watching him play it because it was a lot of fun to see what he chose, what he did, and to hear from who he thought was going to be the murderer. And he was completely convinced that it was going to be Ethan. And I was like, nope, story sucks, after it was over. <laughs> but he, he didn't think it was a bad bad story by any means, which shocked me. Hmm. I didn't I didn't either. I guess I'm just bitter. I you are bitter. I thought it was horrible. So this is like the end of Scooby-Doo, where you assume you know who the actual killer is, and you got it completely wrong. Did you never play Heavy Rain? No, I didn't play it. I told you I didn't play it. Oopsie-daisy. No, oh, I, I will remember that Ethan's not the killer at all. <laughs> this guy <laughs> Ethan, that I have no idea who he is. <laughs> right. He's not the, he's not the I killer. I can't remember who that is either. It doesn't matter. Dude, I remember oh. what I had for breakfast when I was four years old. I'm probably going to end up remembering that. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, yeah, it was a lot of fun uh, watching a friend do it. And if you think you may have some hang-ups on it, probably don't. But I will say, if you have a funny friend, and I was kicking myself the whole time, record it. <laughs> like, do a let's mm-hmm. play with them or whatever, because... You only get one crack at Heavy Rain for the first time. And Heavy it's Rain. Terrible. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. So, no, yeah, that's cool. Fun. That's very that's, cool. That's the extent of my uh, gaming fun. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun being with him. And Get, it's been a lot of fun. fun being with you both. Yeah, Yay, that, that was a seamless transition. Uh, hey! <laughs> you just ruined it. Um, it's a yeah. talk about it. 
<laughs> oh my god, I hate you both. Uh, this has been <laughs> Games Only Podcast episode twenty. Wait, 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 wait buddy. Whoa, did, you, did you hear the news? What news? Sony is releasing Killzone 3's multiplayer standalone for $15 on PSN. What? That's yeah, the whole multiplayer. Would have been great if it was during the Killzone 3 release. <laughs> well, it's cheap now. Fifteen dollars cheap, and I'm actually considering picking it up since I don't. I'm not. I couldn't. I couldn't read those fucking menus. Save my life. My you poor, those my, poor we, my poor weak <laughs> eyes and those bright red and black menus. <laughs> we gotta we'll get you those gamer glasses, burning, burning holes in my retina the whole time I try oh, customizing my character. The heat lamps have got me. I'm feeling a case of the vapors. <laughs> got the itis. Uh, uh, uh okay. So, yeah, that, that's news. I mean, it, that's cool. We've been talking about this for quite some time about, why don't they just release the multiplayer? I'm not interested in single player. Well, and Sony did this, so... Weren't, weren't they trying to do that with them. Medal of Honor? Wasn't DICE planning on doing that? And they never did? Well, they ended up packaging that whole thing together. Yes, mm-hmm. that's so, correct. Because if was, they had planned on it, someone put a no, stop it was, to that. it was two separate uh, studios. One was doing the multiplayer and one was doing the single yeah. player. Weren't they on separate discs also? Uh, uh, no. That was that was Battlefield. Okay. Uh, uh, I thought that Medal of Honor also did, but if they did not... That's no, I, I think they jammed them all onto the same disc. Um, all right, all right. But yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about... I guess... I guess if it was a different game <laughs> besides Killzone, if, if the next if the next Battlefield does this for like a forty bucks instead of sixty bucks, sold instantly because that single player was terrible. <laughs> so did the, you guys know this? Uh, huh? Mass Effect Three, you can digitally pre-order it on PS3. Uh, Download it when it comes out. I did not know that. Nope. It's a shame that it's on PS3 because I want to use my save game from the 360. Oh yeah, for sure. But uh, I would be pretty thrilled to have it, you know, unlock at midnight. So good for Sony for doing these things. It's a shame the Vita sucks. <laughs> Why does the Vita suck? It ain't got no games. <laughs> <laughs> what what console had games at launch, really, though? Oh, I don't know. Dreamcast? Sega Saturn. Yeah, f- fuck you. What? What? Whatever. The Sega Saturn yeah, came packaged with three games. It was awesome. They were all good. Tell me a console that actually survived that had good games at release. None of them. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, I, this I think... a console, man. You're just trying to play some games. It's a, it's a mobile console. Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, I... I, I think we're done for the week. What do you guys think? <laughs> I think well, I tried to wrap this up like, for like six more I hours than I really wanted to. Yeah. What? Oh, okay. I, I can't believe you defended the Vita like some fanboy. I I think that the Vita has the capability of being something great. Uh, I have the capability of replacing a phone for a mobile device. Nope. Yeah, that hot dog I had for lunch was capable of being something great. It wasn't, let me tell you. The hot dog in a hole. There you go. That is is logic. Logically, it it could either be something great or a failure. I'm going to rag on that Vita forever, I think. The Vita's a handheld device. The hot dog was a handheld eating contraption. (laughs) (laughs) I'll give you a handheld eating contraption. Oh, baby. And that's the hey, show. Hey, oh, hey, he hey, said we have sexual threats. That's gonna end the show. <laughs> Listen, HP. He said he wanted a meal, not a snack. Oh, oh snaps! Boo. We got jokes. We've got. Jokes. I got jokes. Been saving that one for years. My abnormally small penis. Thank you for listening to the Game Zone podcast. It's like a nickel, size of a Swedish fish. Oh man! If it was a Swedish fish, <laughs> I'd have so many chicks. People are gonna hate this end because they- we just. This crap. Dude, this they love the end where you two sang, so, I mean, us just bullshitting, they might like. Oh, shitting. We, we ain't singing. I got no songs. Uh, uh, the rifles burst. So this has been episode 26 of the Games Only Podcast. I want to thank you for listening, even through this past five minutes. Tradition! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dr. Gumar. That's been Dr. Gumar. The fiddler on the roof has been Dr. Gumar. The sound of music has been Sunflower 4000. 
Fiddler Crabs. And I have been your rent. H3-1703. Uh, thanks for listening. We will Oops. talk to you next week and kiss you. And hug you. And fucks you. That's gross. Cross is really tough.